Hi, I'm Heinbach and it's good to have you back. What I'm unboxing here is a synthesizer I've been extremely curious about for years. It's a vintage Moog from 1972, yet it is one of the least Moog synthesizers of all while still being all Moog. It's a bit confusing, but I'll get into that later. What mainly interested me is that this synth is supposed to be one of the most impressively wild ones out there, while at the same time being tame enough that it was used to teach synthesis in classrooms. Many things do not seem to add up with this keyboard, so I wanted to hear for myself what it is all about and show that to you. This is the Moog Sonic 6. <laughs> If these sounds are a little bit odd to what you expect from an analog mono synthesizer, you could argue it's a duophonic synthesizer because you can control two of the oscillators separately, that is by design. I heard many demos that explore the more classic vintage synth kind of things like leads and such. Paolo made a good video on that. I want to see how far I can push this.
If you like what you hear, there's a sound pack available on my Patreons of loops from this machine that you can use in your own music freely. At its core, the Sonic 6 is a pretty standard synthesizer. You've got two oscillators and all the standard waveforms. It also has pull width modulation, which is sadly static, but sounds awesome. The oscillators can be played together or apart from each other if you just hold down two keys. If you dial down the keyboard tracking on the second oscillator, you can get all kinds of quarter tones and other microtonalities. You can also use oscillator 1 to control the pitch of oscillator 2. These are just two of the features that make the Sonic 6 special. Have a look at the waveform generator section over here. This is basically two LFOs that are bind together by a master tempo but can have their own speed. And these can be routed to many places. To the oscillators, to the ring modulator, to the contour generator to trigger it and to the filter to modulate it. This makes the Sonic 6 uniquely suited for sequencing without a sequencer, meaning you can use the waveform generators to make changes in the amplitude, in the pitch and in the timbre, which creates lovely sequences. And if these are too modulated for you, you can then add the original direct outs from the oscillators plus the ring modulator up top. bypassing the VCA and the filter. If you do all that, it's very easy to overload the Sonic 6, but that is part of the fun. It can be very clean if you keep the master volume down, but you can overdrive it nicely if you go up.
Speaking of overdrive, the old trick of routing the synthesizer back into itself still works on this machine because it has an external input. So you can take the headphone output, run it into the external input, and then add that in. But of course, you can also use the external input to sequence other signals, such as this TR-606. There are patch points for the oscillator pitch, the filter and the volume, so it's easy to sequence this externally. The version of the Sonic 6 that I have here uses the classic Moog ladder filter and it oscillates beautifully by itself so you can play it over the whole keyboard in almost perfect pitch. And then add in oscillations.
Now, what was all my initial cryptic talk of this being a moke and then not being a moke, but then being all again a moke in the beginning about? Just look at it. This bears no resemblance to any other moog. And in fact, it wasn't designed by Bob Moog. Bob Moog himself was famously against the idea of creating a monophonic portable synthesizer. He was more into the idea of the modular systems. The reason we arguably got Moog's most famous product, the Mini Moog, is because engineer Bill Hemseth worked on it as a side project. But he wasn't the only one at the company asking Bob for a self-contained portable synthesizer. A fellow engineer named Eugene Samchek was also a strong proponent of the idea, which Moog famously disapproved of. Samchek left Array Moog Incorporated and took his ideas with them. Samchek founded a design team, working for Bill Wade Tanner, who launched the company Musonics to serve as the launchpad for his idea of what a pre-patched analog synthesizer should look like. It was called the Sonic 5, and while it started from the same basic design goal as the Mini Moog, the synthesizer itself was quite a different animal. The Sonic 5 was completed as Mu Sonic's product, but was never sold with that brand. When Ari Moog Incorporated was on the verge of bankruptcy, Bill Wittana bought the company to merge with his own, briefly calling it Moog Mu Sonics before settling on the now famous name of Moog Music Incorporated. The Sonic 5 was released as a Moog Mu Sonics product, and Eugene Samchek left Moog again soon after to pursue his ongoing interest in early digital technology. Way Tanner had Moog Musonics repackage the Sonic 5 in a new case, add and update several features, and release it as the Moog Sonic 6. It was one of several products in Moog's storied history that started out with little or no direct involvement from Bob Moog. This is a passage from this lovely book, Synth Gems 1, by Mike Medley, and I can heartily recommend it if you're into synthesizers. I put a link down in the description, and that's an affiliate link, so I get a little kickback if you order through that. From what I read, in the end, Bob Moog approved of the Sonic 6 and even took it with him when he taught synthesis. That is something that this synthesizer is uniquely suited to because of its colorful and high contrast layout, big size and the internal speaker, which sounds rather nice. I love the synthesizer because it has range, from clean to as dirty as a polyvox. Everything is in here and the modulation is just fantastic. I don't even find the single envelope that this has limiting thanks to the clever routing of the modulation matrix. It has also become my youngest daughter's favorite synthesizer because it doesn't make only fart sounds as she thinks most synthesizers do for some reason. The Sonic 6 can be both a brutal and a lyrical instrument. It's up to the player to decide which road to take. This was never as popular as the Mini Moog, so not many of these were made. And they used to be pretty cheap, but as with all things vintage, these cost upwards of 3000. I paid 3500 for one in perfect condition, except for a few missing caps and the missing Moog logo. But at the same time, I got offered another one for 4500 euro. But with the way prices are going, this is a better investment than trying to diamond hand GME. <laughs> Oh, that's a callback to 2021. Check out music from this video and the sound pack on my Patreon. And if you have any questions, do leave them in the comments below. Thank you all for watching. I'll be seeing you in the next one. Bye.